The last commercial supersonic flight was in October 2003, and we haven't seen any supersonic air travel since then. British Airways received Concorde for next to no cost, yet it still failed to become economically viable. So you may have heard of Boom. They're basically attempting to build a 55 passenger supersonic jet capable of flying at Mach 2.2, or just over twice the speed of sound. They claim it'll be 30% more efficient than Concorde and could fly from Los Angeles to Sydney in just 6 hours. I have no doubt as long as they keep receiving investments, they will be able to create this aircraft. However, it's almost certain that the aircraft will not be economically viable. First of all, supersonic jets need to travel long distances. You won't see supersonic flights between London and Paris or Amsterdam. This is because supersonic jets, or SSJs, take a long time to get up to speed. Cutting a 1 hour journey down by 15 minutes isn't worth the premium price for almost every travelling passenger. It may not even cut down the time at all, since most SSJs have to climb as high as 60,000 feet to reach supersonic speeds. So, short haul supersonic travel is out of the question, what about long haul? Let's take the classic example of London to New York. It's a 7 hour transatlantic flight with around 3,500 miles separating the two economic hubs. The boom jet would cut this journey by half, taking 3 hours to travel between the two cities. Perhaps the biggest concern with boom's aircraft is size. Out of the 31 flights between the two cities, only one flight carries under 55 passengers, which is British Airways All Business Class A318 with a stopover in Shannon to refuel and clear US customs. You see, Boom's 55 passenger jet is configured in an all economy class layout. You'll be paying business class prices around $7,500 on this route for one economy seat. Sure, you'd get there 3 hours earlier, but you'd be in a cramped seat with no flat bed for the price of a small car. A better alternative is taking an overnight flight since there will be no lost productivity. Another issue is that SSJs consume a lot of fuel. That was one of the main problems with Concorde. If an aircraft needs a lot of fuel, you have to carry it, and then add extra fuel to fuel the extra weight. For obvious reasons, it takes a lot more energy to move at supersonic speeds than subsonic speeds. Oil prices on the whole have been rising over the last year and they will continue to rise. Airlines prefer efficiency over speed. Now there is an argument that SSJs provide a better return on investment since they can make more flights per day, which is true. However, the cost of boom aircraft is predicted to be around $200 million. If you divide that by 55, and we get the per seat cost of $3.6 million. The 787-9 Dreamliner also has a list price of just under $200 million, but that plane can hold up to 406 people in an all-economy class layout, bringing its seat cost down to just under $500,000. This means that the boom aircraft will need to fly at roughly 6 times the speed of sound to transport as many passengers as a 787-9 in a given time frame. Now boom are targeting $5,000 a fare from New York to London round trip. This is below the price that airlines are offering on that route currently. Their claims seem to be ambitious at best, however if anyone at boom wants to get in touch with me, I'd like to know if they reach that number. Their CEO, Blake Skoll, thinks that 2,000 SSJs will connect 500 cities, and is certain that $2,500 one-way supersonic fares between London and New York is possible. However, the program has seen several delays, and in July this year they delayed the release by two years to 2025. Despite this, they do have orders for the aircraft, they currently have 76 in fact. Virgin Atlantic has ordered 10, and Virgin Galactic is helping with the development of the aircraft. Another European carrier has orders for 15 of the aircraft but haven't been named, along with another 51 orders at the Paris Air Show in 2017. So, the days of Concorde and supersonic travel were the days of glory for aviation. However, the unfortunate reality is, is that whilst a small number of people do care about speed, majority of the people are influenced by the price. Airlines have to cater for the many, not for the few people. So there you go captains, that was a video regarding boom and supersonic travel. If you have any further opinions or thoughts, then do share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and consider subscribing, and I hope to catch you guys very soon.